let's prepare on the properties of soil study today we are going to prepare on the properties of soil so before going into the properties of the soil we should know what soil is so there is a three phase system present in the soil so if we are clear with that means only you can deal with the properties of the soil so let us take this as the three phase system of the soil so here solids will be present water will be present and air will be present here so you can know the volume of these three also so if you take this volume means it is vs if this volume it is vv that is the volume of the voids so the volume of air and the volume of water together is called as volume of void so either it may be of water alone or it may be of air alone or it may be a combination of both also so the total volume is called as v so so if the voids is filled with water alone then the soil is called as wet soil if the void is filled with air alone then the soil is called as the dry soil so this is the difference between the soil type so it purely depends on the voids with what it is filled so now we will continue with the properties of the soil so basically we are going to see some six properties of soil so the first one is the void ratio so void ratio is denoted by e which is equal to volume of voids to the volume of solids so this can be greater than 0 and it can be greater than 1 also because the voids can be more than the volume of solids itself so the e for coarse grain will be always lesser than the fine grain only because the ratio that is the volume of voids to the volume of solids will be more in coarse grain because there will be more gap and also more solids but in case of the fine grain if you see means the volume of solids will be very lesser and the volume of voids will be nearly more only so we can tell that the e will be always lesser for the coarse grain and it will be greater for the fine grain soil then the e value for the cubical array and the diagonal arrangement of the soil is given here so this can be understood with this diagram so this is the cubical array and this is the diagonal arrangement of the soil so when it is arranged in a cubical means here there will be a lot of gaps present in the soil so this is called as the voids but if you see the diagonal arrangement the voids will be very lesser here so it means that the cubical array arrangement will have a void more and the diagonal arrangement of the soil will have the voids less so when the cubical array has more voids that means the void ratio is more and for diagonal arrangement it is less voids and it is always plus so it is determined as 0.91 for the cubical array and 0.35 for the diagonal arrangement of the soil and the next is the relative density so this is purely based on the voids ratio so we can see it here itself so it is denoted by id which is equal to e max minus e by e max minus e minimum so e max and e minimum will be a particular value for a soil and e is the natural void ratio at what time we are taking so at present what is the ratio there void ratio there so that we will take as e so this will give you an idea about the type of the soil because the void ratio will give you an idea about what the voids is filled with and how is the void ratio and the volume of solid is related so with that you can find what type of soil is present there so if you take this it is specially for coarse grain soil alone so when id value is less than 15 the soil will be very loose if it is 15 to 35 it is loose 35 to 65 it is medium 65 to 85 dense and greater than 85 which is a higher value means it is very dense so if you take a denser soil the e will be very low because it is densely packed so that the voids are very less and e also will be very low so it means that the e will be nearly equal to e minimum so when this e is nearly equal to e minimum what happens e max minus e minimum by e max minus e minimum will be equal so you can get the id value is 100 which means that it is a very dense soil but if you take a loose soil the voids will be more and void ratio also will be more which may be equal to the e max value so that e max minus e max in the formula will become zero so that you can get id value is zero so you will get that the soil is very loose so based on the id value we can judge what type of soil is present there 
and the next property we are going to see is porosity so it is denoted by n here the only difference is it is the ratio of volume of voids to the total volume so when the total volume comes here the range will be limited within 100 only or within 1 only because the volume of voids cannot go greater than the total volume so the range of this porosity is from 0 to 100 only here both the bv and v is variable because it may be altering sometimes due to an extra air or extra water but the vs will be always constant where we use this vs means we use this in void ratio so always void ratio is better than the porosity and relation is also given between this porosity and void ratio that is n is equal to e by 1 plus e and e is equal to n by 1 minus n the third property of the soil is degree of saturation so this is purely based on the volume of water so how much the soil is saturated so here the s is denoted as the degree of saturation and here the formula is given as volume of water to the volume of voids into 100 so here also the range is from 0 to 100 it can be equal to 100 also because the voids can be completely filled with water itself when it is completely filled it is 100 then the s value will be 100 so it is denoted as fully saturated but when it is 0 that means it is fully filled with air alone so that it is called as the dry soil when s is equal to 0 and the fourth property is the air content so it is denoted by ac this is also the same as the degree of saturation but here we are considering the volume of air alone so volume of air to the volume of voids so here also if it is fully filled with air alone means your ac value will be 1 and if it is fully filled with water alone the soil is called as saturated soil then your ac value will be 0 so here also the range is from 0 to 100 or 0 to 1 so from this you can know that the degree of saturation and the air content combinedly can give you a 100 percentage because the denominators for this both are v v only that is the volume of voids but the numerators are v w and v a where we know already the volume of water plus volume of air will give you volume of voids so when you combine this both then you get the value of 100 percentage or 1 and the fifth property is the percentage air void so it is denoted by na which is equal to volume of air to total volume so here it is nearly same as the porosity formula because in porosity formula what we have seen n is equal to v v by v so this is the porosity formula so this is somewhat nearly equal to this formula but here the volume of voids is completely with air alone so that the limit of this formula is given as 0 to n value because the maximum it can go is 100 percentage of air so when it is 100 percentage it will be equal to vv only so the range of this percentage of air voids will be 0 to n so when it is completely filled with air then it is dry soil so that the value will be n and if it is and if it is completely filled with water then it is saturated soil and the value of Na will be 0. So there is a relation between this porosity and the percentage R wise that is Na is equal to N into AC. And the sixth property is the water content. So this is also an important property. Here water content will be equal to weight of the water by the weight of the solid. So this formula is only based on the weight. The remaining formulas everything is based on the volume here the water current can be always greater than or it can be equal to zero we have already seen a soil type called bentonite which is a volcanic ash and it has a high water content so that is nearly equal to 500 percentage thank you and keep watching for the next lecture on the water content determination